Megan Griffith, and you're listening to Live with the Lions. Welcome back to Live with the Lions, the Columbia Women's Basketball Podcast. I'm Meg Rojas, the Director of Basketball Operations, and I'm here with none other than head coach, Megan Griffith. Coach G is here today to talk about the team's growth over the past three years. Last season, she led the team to a historical record of 17 and 10 with an eight and six Ivy League record. And our first ever team's qualification into the Ivy League basketball tournament. Welcome, Coach G. Thank you, uh, Meg Rojas. I'm very excited to be here and get to talking about the program and all of our players. So obviously last season, it was a huge bummer that we were unable to compete in the Ivy League tournament due to COVID, even though we finally made it. But what did it mean to you to finally hit a groove after being head coach for three seasons? And as a program, we obviously have been seeing growth every year off the court, but finally hitting a groove and getting the most wins last season. Well, it's been since we got here and, and you've been with me since the beginning, it's, it's always been about culture, right? And I think that when you win in culture and, you know, it's not just like buying into something, like there was a vision that we brought to Columbia and, you know, it was, it was something that we talked about often and we knew we didn't quite have the pieces yet, but if we could get people to buy in and then believe in it, ultimately we could execute the vision, right? And that, you know, that would be become what we did on the court. And, you know, behind the scenes and like the three years prior, I feel like we were seeing that, like you said, the successes off the court, the wins off the court that we were celebrating. And last year to have it come, you know, and culminate into wins, translate onto success on the court and, you know, to share that with our family and our extended family that was, you know, supporting us, I think was, you know, was really, um, I don't know if the word is rewarding, but it was just, it was special to see that the growth was taking legs and that we were getting some real results. So for the first few years, everyone wanted to know what edge was. And I think now we just need to clear the air. Can you, <laughs> can you just tell everyone, I think we're, we want everyone to know now what edge means, how you came up with it, and what each letter stands for. <laughs> yeah. So edge is, it's multi-meaning. It's also an acronym. Um, I, I really do believe that, you know, when you want people to buy and believe into something like we talked about culture just a minute ago there there needs to be something that they can they can say out loud right there needs to be a phrase or a motto or something that they're attached to and the program's attached to so uh, i was trying to figure out what that was that we could bring and it could be sustainable and not just something that was like a motto for the year right so i remember like getting the job and it's march 2016 and maybe now april and i'm like sitting in riverside park I had just moved to New York and I'm like living out of a hotel and I'm, it's like beautiful outside and I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is like, what can that thing be? You know, it was just, it was a kind of like a moment of clarity for me. And, you know, I was thinking about the things that have guided me while I was at Columbia and, you know, through my life and career. And, you know, I just think I've always believed this place and in New York, you needed like an edge to kind of like stand out, get by, be successful, right? Like having an edge over your opponent. And so we kind of just like started playing around with words and, I'm like, well, what could that mean? Like, what what is the multi-meaning, uh, what's the acronym that we could use, right? Uh, so we came up with um, energy, discipline, grit, and excellence. And, you know, I think those are, those are four words that we feel really good about that you can lead in your life outside of the court. And then also it really translates to basketball. And that's what I think we've really took a good step in our staff and program is like quantifying that for them. So that's not just like, abstract words that you like throw and stick at the wall and it's like oh bring your energy and everybody starts yelling right it's more about like interaction with your teammates high fives embraces pointing out each other on assists and great plays things like that so I think that's the step we we finally took in the last two years was there a specific moment over the past three years that you felt culture wise with edge we were like yes we are we might not have won but like we kind of like turned a corner Mm mm-hmm Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so <laughs> I would say that it's really interesting. Like the beginning of every year, like the first time you see your team, like at practice, right? Like at first practice, like it's easy to like have a good first practice, like anywhere yeah. you are. But just like 
the it's not even almost what you see it's what other people see right like so whether our sid walks in or our ad walks in and sees the practice or it's just somebody like on the outside of the program yeah. and then they're like wow like your team looks really different like to me those were like small wins because it meant one my staff is doing a great job in recruiting and two like our players were getting better right the ones that we had so that was i think that's the most important part with recruiting is that you don't stop recruiting your players when they get to you right like right. there's like an ongoing growth process so to me, that was like, those were wins. Those were very small wins. But I remember there was a play in our second year, we were playing, I think Boston College. And this was, um, which we might end up talking about this later, but it was our first ACC win in a program. Yeah. And it was during, like our annual education day. So the gym was like packed, like just bumping, like kids screaming. I don't even think we, like at that point, they weren't even rooting for us. It was just like any good play or excitement. Just loud. <laughs> just loud, just noise. And it was like a play where um, it was Camille Page Jill senior class. And like, it was just one of those hustle plays where like everybody did something. So like Paige dove on the floor, she tipped the ball, Josie dove out of bounds, she saved it. Camille ran to go get the saved ball. And then like it transitioned into something like, and I was like, wow, like we're getting it, you know? Uh, so that was, that was like, I remember that being a big moment. I clipped it and even like, I think labeled the clip culture. Yeah, and, like the bench is going nuts. Like it was just like everybody was involved, even though it, and it wasn't about what was happening around us. So that was big. And then I would say, you know, this past season, uh, like bus rides, like to me, like culture is like in the moments where nobody's watching, right? Like that's where you really know if your culture is good. And like, we just had amazing bus rides with our team that were like, it wasn't just like fun or like celebrating wins. It was also like substantial and like meaningful. Like you could tell like real things like interactions and exchanges were being had you know like yeah. good and bad so I, I think that that was that was really big this past season for us that's so true I feel like bus rides actually are like the new locker room culture <laughs> so true Content. yeah you know like how I feel about locker room culture I mean right. <laughs> it is it makes or breaks you because it's it's player leadership and like yeah. we talked about our team is finally trending towards a player-led team and um finally it's like funny saying finally like I just it takes a while and I'm really proud of them like they're taking those steps and that's I, but I agree it's bus bus culture is like locker room culture I mean it so is our bus rides were very fun this year <laughs> I like talk about them all the time <laughs> we had some good ones we had some good ones and too like even the ones that you know maybe you didn't have the success you wanted or it like it was still like we got something out of it like you know, like you can sit there and like be on your phone and like be in your own world or you can like go, like ex get out of yourself and like embrace your teammate or like talk to your coaches or like, you know, just figure it out right. together. Yeah. Now that's team edge. And I'm in some of these meetings, but what do you do player wise every year to make sure that they're getting better on and off the court using edge as like still that core value? So, you know, individually, they all, uh, all of the players, they edge goal set in the beginning of the year. So we have um, various meetings throughout the year, about three of them, where we talk about like your personal journey, like mentally, physically, emotionally. And it's a series of questions. And then we kind of end, end with edge goal setting in like three different areas of their life. You know, that's going to be academic, basketball, leadership um, for a lot of our returners, because they know what this program looks like. And then you know, we also talk about, you know, what that means like for your future and your career, right? A large part of becoming uh, Columbia Line and playing for our program specifically is that we want them to graduate with options and not just, it's like beyond basketball. Like what are the curiosities that you came here to explore, right? So it's like, let's tap into that. So we start talking about that like day one, you know, that first or second week of school with all of our players. Yeah, I don't know too many programs that I feel like ask what your summer plans are the first time that you get to campus <laughs> like what do you want to do next summer yeah, like August. yeah a lot of times I get like stares but like by junior year everybody like gets it so right. it's uh you know it's just one of those things that you'll plant the seed early with basketball now who mm -hmm. are you most excited coming back skill wise because this is like a really big skill time for people obviously we're not yeah. going up and down as a team but like who is like in your opinion just getting after it with workouts. The person that's taking it the most seriously and is Michaela Markham. Uh, I'm, you know, she's a junior for us. She'll she'll be the lone senior next year. But she, I mean, she just 
she's hungry for feedback. She wants to get better. She's really been working on herself off the court. Um, like, I just feel like she had like a reset, like for herself where it was like, I'm just going to get better. Like, I'm not worried about the things I can't control right now. So I think from jump, she's been one of the players that has been a great example of just like investing in yourself. Like, how am I going to get better? So I'm excited to get her back and get, get to work again with her. I think there's like a level of understanding how important this time is with like our, our players. They're like very grateful that they can come back and play basketball. Like not only are they like getting this time skill wise, Mm -hmm. but I obviously didn't get this either being like, Oh, like this can be taken away from me and like being very grateful that they are part of a team. I agree with that. I think, I mean, it's true. Like it's, it is not, you're not entitled to anything. This is a privilege like that you get to play collegiate basketball or whatever level you're at. Like, and you know, it's, there's things that are out of our control. And again, like I I agree with you completely. I think they're really, they're really trying to make the most out of this year. With going back to what you said about investing, can you explain to us what we did in, I think September with our hundred day accountability and how, we've sort of shaped that into how it's grown a little bit. Cause now we know we're not having a season, but where that started and our vision, our vision vessels. I actually have my vision vessel here, so I will show it to you. Do but you? Yes. <laughs> I do. So uh, back in the, I guess, right before the fall semester started, you know, we were, we were talking a lot as a staff, we were talking with the team about how are we going to, um, you know, really, in, like spend this time like thinking about how we improve individually as we're trying to improve collectively and, and culturally and so actually our strength coach and I kind of like had a long conversation about this and we were talking about like just things that are important like when you're on your own to think about right not that they aren't when you're together but it's a lot easier just like roll with what your team's doing so we we talked about having like a daily accountability checklist and so each player in, in a staff member on our team has a daily account, accountability checklist in the form of a Google sheet. And there's like five, five areas of your life that at the end of the day, you're supposed to be like, okay, did I do that? Did I, did I think about my nutrition? Did I hydrate? Did I drink my 120 ounces of water? Did I exercise today? Did I walk at least 7,500 steps? And then like your personal challenge, whichever that can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. So basically every day, the goal is to like, even if you didn't do one of those things, like you go through and you physically write, like if you did or not. And then like, if you did, did go through that process, you get to invest in yourself in some way, you know, like whether monetarily, um, some people chose to like write themselves quotes. So they'd have a hundred quotes at the end of this time. Uh, some people chose to donate money um, at the end of it. So they would just like count up the times that they, you know, invested in themselves. And we, we picked a hundred days because that was essentially from when we started the official like launch of this, this initiative to finals. So basically it was a hundred day period um, that we were saying, you know, you're going to hold yourself and each other accountable by investing in yourself. So we created these vision vessels and mine is uh, it's a cylindrical item, <laughs> but you know, it's basically, you're supposed to, it's like a vision board or a vision box. I know people have done these before, but it's, you're really uh, putting on here anything that's important to you, motivates you, supports you, encourages you, whatever that you need in your life to like um, realize that you're on course and like you, you're working towards something, right? Like a better version of yourself. So like I just have things on here that are really important to me. Like I have some things, like I have a lion on here, uh, Kobe Bryant in the eight jersey. Um, Love. He was a big influence for me. I have Iverson here stepping over Lou in uh, the playoffs back in the day. I have my family on here. Um, I have different quotes. I have Steve Prefontaine. I have my, you know, just a lot of things that are important to me. So every day, like, I open this box up, and if I did my Taylor County Blood checklist, I put $5 in here, and, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to donate it to a cause that's important to me. I mean, I love it. What's the main thing you've learned personally with, with the checklist? So for myself, it's yeah. one, I don't drink enough water <laughs> and that it, th- that there takes like, you really need to, if you're really going to be serious about making changes in your life, you, there has to be consistency and like thought that goes behind it. Like you just don't luck into like getting better at something, Like you actually have to, to put the time into doing it. 
And like, you can have days off or days or like lapses, but the majority of your time spent, like you have to realize like how it all correlates, right? Like if I don't sleep enough, everything is, is bad. Um, which honestly at this time of the year, typically I don't sleep enough, but I've had the time like, you know, or like I can, you know, I I have, I have more time now. Uh, so, you know, I think that that's a big, um, and something we preach to our players, but I think as, as for us as staff, it's also extremely important that we can be at our best for everybody around us. Yeah. With, with being an athlete at Columbia and now recruiting, do you have like a, a new or better understanding of what it takes for like a student athlete to come and be successful here? I can get to know you in a real sense. If you can like how you will do here. Otherwise, like, you know, we want, we don't want to bring people here that aren't going to be able to like manage it. To be like successful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I do think there's like a different, like there is a, a kind of person that will do really well here, but it's not the like, this is the funny part about the Ivy League. It's not the like smartest person. It's not always the smartest person. It's the person that has like a lot of good balance and like takes things at face value and like is a hard worker, right? And does still does well in things, but right. like to me, those are the people that thrive here the most, right? And th- that's like what our team looks like right now. If you look at the portfolio mm-hmm. of our team. They feed off each other doing really well, like in school or something, mm-hmm. even with like accountability groups. And then they're, they'll like turn around and sort of be like, all right, it's time to, I need to figure this out. Yeah. I mean, it's like exactly what you just said. Like they, that's culture, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, like I remember last year, like Abby Shue, right? So everybody knows and loves Abby Shue, right? Um, she's got her own like uh, cheering section, the shoe, <laughs> the shoe crew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. So, so good. good. I mean, so, so, so creative. Uh, so like Abby last year, right? She was like, I know I need to get my work done because Carly and Caitlin are really smart. And I'm like, Abby, you're really smart too. Like, but that's the competitive, like the healthy competitive energy on our program right now. It's like, there's no weak link because they understand that we're only as good as the weakest link on our team in whatever right. we do. So that's why nobody is the weak link. And I know like that they all want to be challenging one another and challenging themselves. With this season obviously being very different and we are no longer going to have our seniors that would have been seniors this year. Is there anything, I mean, we're obviously going to miss them. It's such a bummer that we won't have them on the team, but from a culture perspective, is there anything specifically you're going to miss from Riley, Mad, Cal, and Dre? Absolutely. I mean, they were the first class to buy into our vision here, right? And, and put it in, in motion. And I, I mean, I think that they learned a lot from their time from like day one recruiting process to their first year to now, now this time in their career. And I think that each of them, it's a, it's a really um, independent class as well, which like you have that our first class year was very independent as well, right? Like that first class we inherited, like they were just like grown women, I felt like when we got here, I yeah. was like, who are you people? Um, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like this class is like kind of similar in some ways to them because they just like from day one, like they just, they didn't need a lot of like hand holding either, but like it was more about, okay, like speak up, learn, use, find your voice, like things like that. that, Those were the big things for them, but they were, they were always like hard workers for the most part, you know, we added Callan two years later. So Callan didn't even join the program until, um, you know, going into like what her sophomore year was, which was like the year she sat out for her transfer year. So, you know, it was interesting, like, cause that class like changed shape a little bit. Right. And, you know, I think each of them brings something really different. Like Dre is just a workhorse. Like she's, she's a great example of just like doing more, like to just be better, right? Like in, mm-hmm. in all areas of her life, like she's, in, and she just, she says the right things like in a true sincere way, I think. Um, Riley's really good one-on-one. Uh, we, we've like, we know that as a staff, like it's not a lot of people can see that, but like she just has a really great connection one-on-one with like her teammates, especially yeah. in person, which like is, you just can't replace that. You know, that's just going to be like, it's going to change and like, by committee people will take that that role um you know mad was from the beginning like just very quick to like understand concepts and like just be there for people like she had that silent like if anybody said like who's the kindest person you ever met it's like mad pack right (laughs) so she just like she had this like genuine authentic kindness um and like just was like there she was always there for people 
so like that's like that motherly maternal vibe on our team and then you know when we added cal cal was so mature and organized and like how she went about things like i think she'll she's going to be a great she's already has been but will continue to be a great resource for our young players understanding like how do you get on top of like juggling basketball juggling school so that you can like do more than one thing well right like Callan was like crushing it as an RA which is like yeah. unheard of <laughs> like managing like 40 kids on her floor yeah. and she like landed her dream internship got her job you know is going on to play basketball and obtain her masters like it, she's she's just like Cal like relief really knows how to like think things through big like long term big picture so like we're gonna miss that a ton you know and and I think as a individually like you know, although this year was like, um, not able to happen for them, you know, it's, they're, they're still very much a part of everything we've done up until this point. And like, I just hope that they take that with them. They remember that. And, you know, for us, we just need to keep celebrating it. Yeah. I mean, if Dre, if Andrea hasn't sent you a workout <laughs> to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dre, I get workouts from her all the time. And they're like, they're not just like, oh, here's a 10 minute. It, it's like they're a hard. bone crushing. <laughs> We've been trading workouts back and forth because I'm like finally at like a good level of fitness again. Uh, mm. But she's, she likes to, she likes to get it in. <laughs> they're hard. Sometimes I'll like try and I'm like, try. I don't know how you're doing this. because Some of those this, core workouts, I completely yeah. agree. I'm like, this <laughs> is impossible. Puzzle. This is wow. impossible. What else are you doing, like, personally during this time? Um, so I've been cooking, like, almost every night. Uh, I've been reading a lot more, like, the news as well as for personal interest. Um, I have been watching some, like, series and shows. Uh, I just finished uh, The Queen's Gambit, and I'm watching Shit's Creek right now, which is hysterical. <laughs> so good. So good. I mean, oh, my God. It's amazing. It's like a modern Will and Grace, but like not at all at the same time. Like humor wise, like it's amazing. It's, I love David, but um, shout out Amy Rivera. She Amy. recommended it for me. Um, and so, you know, like I've been just doing things that I, it's like uncharacteristic for me at this time of the year, but, um, and then I've been like working out a ton um, and just trying to get healthy. You know, for people that are listening, I did tear my ACL in the season and here I am today I uh, just I feel great and you know so like to me it's like I just totally looked at this time as like how can I do things that like I just haven't done in a while uh you know and still g continue to grow as as a coach too you know I think I've been challenging myself to like not just learn about like culture things off the court but you know like I've I think I've gotten better as like a skills coach like I've like widen my knowledge of like things that we can be working on when I'm not with you yeah. uh, and doing research, you know? So it's just, you know, you kind of fill your time in, in strange ways, but when you look at it, it's like, wow, like, you know, there's some areas that I really grew in. Is there any last minute or things you want to like leave our listeners with our, our lion family who might have made it through 50 minutes of listening? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you're still listening, like we know you love us. So that's, a, that's a good plus right there. But I would say this, that, you know, our program is growing uh, in a lot of ways and in large part due to the surrounding family and the people that support us. But, you know, I'm very excited about our future. I think this is the time where hopefully you've already been on the bandwagon, but I think we're going to see people jumping on and being excited to watch our program grow and develop. But just stay tuned, like, because our, our athletes are going to be on here, our staff's going to be on here. And it's, you know, I think if you really want to be invested, um, it's about learning about us and each other and us learning about you. So, you know, I just think the relationship part is huge right now. So thank you for, you know, listening and following along. But, um, you know, I know one thing we talked about was a challenge, right? Am I throwing out a challenge to the group here? Yeah. Give, give the Lion fam a challenge. Challenge. Okay. So I'm going to challenge anybody that's listening. If you made it to this point, I want you to take a selfie or some picture of you in Columbia gear and tag us on social media, yes. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It does not matter. Tag us. And if you do, we are going to shout you out and you'll be recognized um, from our accounts as well. So please shout us out. And if you haven't gotten on the bandwagon yet and you get on during this time, we won't tell anyone. You need to be a Columbia <laughs> Lions. You can just, yeah, we'll act like you were here from the beginning. But. The whole time. <laughs> Yeah.
All right. Well, thanks, Coach G, for joining us on Live with the Lions, the Columbia Women's Basketball Podcast. Please follow us on all social media channels for the video version of this and extended clips from the episode. Maybe some bloopers might make it in there. And thank you for listening.